The December topic in my Pathwork Steps newsletter is Pathwork Lecture 152, which is the connection between ego and universal power. There are many lectures on ego in Pathwork. The stress on ego development is a bit different than in many other spiritual disciplines. My perception of this is that the ego drives the car, drives the bus, drives the train. The ego expresses decisions. It selects from input. It hears the body, soul, spirit, mind, and decides the priority of things that we do in our lives. The ego is indispensable. It can be important to soften or minimize the effect of the ego, but the primary reason for that is so that you can hear these other input aspects more clearly. So in looking at ego versus universal power, the idea of the lecture is that the ego may need to step aside a little bit so that it can feel into a deeper knowing within us, which is actually meant to be the decision maker, even though on the earth plane, the ego does that. Ego is deciding right now what words I use, how I express, facial expression, what my hands do. It may seem like instinct, but it's about who I perceive myself as a person, who I developed myself as a person. So that there's a momentum there built by ego, controlled by ego, that can overwhelm intuition. It can overwhelm softer impulses. So the idea of the lecture is to bring these two things more in balance so that the ego becomes in service to universal power in stri instead of trying to harness universal power. So another aspect of this is a, a way of looking at it, and that is that spiritual awareness is a form of spiritual adolescence. So just like human beings are children, then they're teenagers, and then they're young adults, and then they're more mature, and then eventually they're hopefully wise, wise and elder. Uh, spiritually, we come into awareness of a deeper level of emotional reality of knowing, of understanding. And during that time period, it's very boisterous. It's very confusing. These are things we haven't noticed before, things we haven't evaluated. We get flooded with information, and we've got to sort through all this stuff. And like teenagers, we become enamored with one aspect, and then we drop it. We become enamored with another aspect and drop it. So it's a period of exploration and experimentation. It's really important because in that exploration, you may find what you value, uh, the style that you enjoy, the community that you enjoy, that you feel most supported by. Then uh, uh, part of this is mentioned in a section of the lecture, talks about words that I stumble over sometimes, spontaneity and individualization. And this particular aspect was really interesting in the weekly meetings because there's a general misinterpretation of both of those. Spontaneity can sometimes take on the flavor of what its critics describe it as. And it becomes colored by the idea of spontaneity being reckless and irresponsible. And yet, if you look it up in the dictionary, and I find looking words up in the dictionary really valuable. I have a reasonably high vocabulary, but the nuance in words is, is really fascinating. To find the neutral interpretation rather than a colored interpretation. And spontaneity, according to the dictionary, is... Uh, something arising from an unknown or unexpected source. That's all it means. It doesn't mean it doesn't make any sense. 
It means that in that moment, you don't know what it's connected to. So spontaneity can be seen as a soul movement where understanding will follow later. Individualization goes back to what I talked about, about becoming a spiritual adult. Society is based on cooperation and consensus. We all agree. We don't necessarily agree on all the details, but we agree to work together. Individualization is about determining who you really are, what your knowing is about, what your divine aspect is, what your gifts are. Gifts to yourself, gifts to your family and friends, and gifts to your wider community. And it takes a while for that level of development to flourish and flower and really understand. So this is not something that's meant to happen in your early 20s, which is nice because that means that by 30 you may have accomplished a lot of goals in social, cultural life. But 30-ish is about the stage where a different level of awareness begins. So for me, it's, it's fun to imagine that there's more to life than just work and play and, and uh, uh, that level of social and cultural development, that then there comes into a much deeper level of spiritual uh, inner knowing and perhaps a greater ability to offer oneself in service from a deeper place. So I hope you enjoy the lecture. Thanks for listening.